So in this video, I'm going to cover what I do as a senior data scientist in terms of the steps for when I do machine learning projects in the, in the company. And first thing first, you have to kind of have a basic concept of supervised learning or unsupervised learning. So the supervised learning is that the data is actually labeled with a predict, uh, predictive outcome. So let's say if you have an email classification for a spam or ham, your data actually shows that if that email is a spam or ham. Uh, and so the advantage of supervised learning is that it's simpler computation and it has very high accuracy because you already know exactly what you're expecting uh, versus unsupervised learning, meaning you have all these variables slash features that you ha you are feeding into the model, but you don't know exactly what you're expecting out of the outcome from. So data is completely not labeled and you don't know what you're expecting it from it. And the, the downside is that it's very heavy computation, but the good side is that you get to find out what's the underlying pattern. So here are the five steps I usually take when I have to solve a business and machine learning problem. So first thing first, uh, starting from the top, that we'll have uh, you know defined problems. So we'll be asked from business stakeholders like, how do I predict user churn? Or how do I predict uh, revenue for the next three months? These type of questions. And so we need to really understand what the problem is that they're trying to solve. And the second step will be collecting data. So you have to come up with a lot of assumptions about what would be a good indicator of this prediction, um, such as, you know, churn, and it might be uh, how engaged they are, that will indicate, you know, how likely are they going to churn. And then the third step will be feature selection. So we will, you know, have, let's say we came up with 80 features or uh, 100 features from, you know, the data we collected. And so most of the machine learning models don't work well with a lot of variables or features. So we will have to do um, another step like called feature selection to kind of de decide what are the features that are very important to predict the outcome. And usually the model will tell you a score that will tell you how important each variable is and that would be very helpful. And then also the next step will be building models. So let's say if you want to build a model, you have to know, you know, if it's a classification problem, if it's a regression problem, and even within classification problem, there are multiple, like a lot of different models that you can use, like decision uh, tree, random forest, or just regression, and also depend on if it's like a binary classification or multivariate classification. And then you go come up with all these models, and then after that, you'll have calculate the accuracy of each model based on your training test. So after covering the five steps of how I would go through the you know thought process of the machine learning problem, the first thing is what's the problem? So the business usually asks you a very clear question or a very vague question you don't know, but like it will be something like, oh, how do I know that you know what's the likelihood of someone being reengaged or like what's the likelihood of someone uh, going to churn? And that those are the questions you're gonna get from the business side, and then you have to think about it. And you know yourself as like this kind of like decision tree thought process. Like, is this a classification problem or is it a regression problem? And classification problem meaning you're trying to group these people into some sort of two groups or three groups or multiple groups. A two group classification will be called like the binary classification, like if it's yes or no. And the regression will be trying to predict like the revenue or trying to forecast something. That'll be the regression model. And the examples that I'm, I'm trying to give the, the very simple examples here are like the K-nearest neighbors, that's what KNN stands for. And that's pretty much a supervised learning where you try to uh, cluster people based on their um, data or behavior. And then K-means is an unsupervised learning. So you're trying to group or cluster the users into some sort of way, but you don't know exactly what you're clustering into. That's what we covered for unsupervised learning. And for regression, the uh, most simple uh, regression model would be a linear regression um, that people, most people are familiar with. Or profit is a Facebook uh, machine learning model for forecasting. It's more like a time series regression. 
And the second question is, you know, what data should we include? And you have to think about, you know, in your database, what data is available for you? And do you have a why? And if you have a why, then that means you're supervised learning because you know exactly what's the expected outcome. And then you have to, in your data, in your data collection process, you have to have a lot of uh, assumptions about, you know, thinking. You have to kind of put yourself into user shoes, like, why are they, uh, how, why would they churn? Like, how would they likely to churn? And then think about, oh, if if they're very engaged and they're less likely to churn, if they uh, subscribe to something, they're less likely going to churn. Like, you have to come up with all these assumptions yourself. And then the next step will be doing exploratory analysis. So after you come up with all these metrics that you, you assume will be a good indicator of, like, what's a good uh, predictor, to this model, then you need to put all your metrics into some sort of charts. Uh, it can be histogram or anything that can show you exactly uh, how would it be different for uh, different classifications. And then after you do your exploratory analysis, which tells you kind of like, oh, which you know variable is a good indicator, and also um, you know trying to check the data quality. After that, you might want to normalize or standardize your data. Uh, depend, really, that really depends on what machine learning model you're using because some of the machine learning models like k-means uh, takes the scale of the data or metrics very seriously. So you definitely want to some sort of, do some sort of normalization and uh, just trying to cover you know, the two most commonly used ones I, use, I personally use are min-max normalization so it pretty much takes a metric. I can, you know, the metric can go from zero to a couple hundreds of thousands, and then you try to shrink them down into this from zero to one, reduce the scale down to only zero to one, and with continuous data. And then, or you can also do z-score standardization, uh, which is pretty much calculating, you know, putting everyone into uh, a bell-shaped curve and try to calculate what's how much, how far is this person, uh, and how many standard deviation are they away from the mean. So after you come up with all the features and metrics that you think are the good data that will feed into your model, the next thing you want to do is feature engineering and selection process. So first thing first, always check your data quality because you often think uh, you collected the data what you think it is, but then you go in and check the data you pulled and then you realize it might be garbage just because, you know, maybe the data was not logged correctly or something. And the second thing is always check if you have a lot of nodes in your data, because imagine if your data is just a lot of blanks, and how is this a good, even a good indicator in your model, right? And the uh, third thing is uh, you want to check the correlation between your metrics. So for example, if you have a uh, deliver email account and open email account as your two metrics, those two things are very highly correlated because you cannot open an email unless you already delivered an email. So what I would do in this case will be creating a new feature based on the existing metrics. So what I would do would be uh, calculating the open rates, or you can calculate percentage difference before and after. So after you come up with all the features that you want, uh, let's say a uh, hundred of them, and then you'll run these feature selection model uh, based on, uh, depend on like, if it's a regression model or um, classification model, and then you'll uh, do a forward step classific uh, feature selection or a backward elimination process. The model is pretty much running through each, adding each uh, metric and then try to calculate how accurate would this model be and how important is this mod, uh, is this feature. After you have a list, a list of features that you came up with and the scores of how important they are, then you'll come up with a list of models, uh, potentially with the same model but different parameters and make sure that your parameters have a bigger gap between them so then you can actually tell a difference between you know, what the number of parameters will make a difference. So it'll be like number of clusters or number of features in your recommendation system. And then after you came up with all these models and do your train and test splits, you'll calculate the accuracy metrics. So such as like accuracy score, or RMSE, MAE, or median absolute percentage error, uh, really depend on what kind of machine learning model you're doing. But these scores 
would definitely tell you which model works the best uh, based on your training test. And usually after you calculate accuracy metrics, you'll think, okay, that's, you know, that's the final solution. I already picked the model. Uh, but in the uh, big companies, they tend to, you know, want to invest more money and time into, you know, really finding out what, which model works the best. Uh, and this usually uh, applies more to uh, some machine learning model that you're putting into production. And then so what people would do would be uh, running an A-B test. So you randomly split uh, your users into two groups, uh, into two models that you built. And then after that, you'll see how much better is one model compared to the other, and then pick them up. And to summarize uh, what we covered today, uh, first, you want to define the business problem and what, like, you know, understand what machine learning would help with this business question. And then the second thing is you want to collect your data, but make sure your data quality is good and also not a lot of nulls in your data. And the third step will be feature selection or feature engineering. So you're trying to remove your uh, highly correlated metrics and also run your feature selection model based on depending on what kind of machine model you're doing. It will tell give you a list of metrics and a list of scores uh, for, based on importance. And then the fourth step is, uh, you know, you come up with a list of models and you calculate accuracy metric and then decide which model works the best based on the uh, accuracy metrics. Uh, the fifth step, if this model uh, is, you know, something that's going into production, then usually people will run an A-B test to see which model works the best or has better accuracy.